Listen, children. I've been fighting all my life for this world. It never ends. They're gonna send everything they have at you. To survive, you have to embrace the suffering. To stand up and carry it. It's not about the pain you can deal. It's about how much you can take. It's do or die, sis. Just like Papa taught us. supernatural abilities but like what we're seeing here now is kind of one of the things you want to do with the game is kind of juxtaposition of the mundane and then also the sort of craziness there's plenty of that um, then plenty of that in the game so this clip is from the behind closed doors uh, demo that we're showing here at E3 just wanted to give people a sneak sneak peek of it I should maybe be quiet and let let the images speak for themselves uh -huh. yeah this is normal <laughs> So it's very strange. We have some of the people that are floating, and then there's this other one that's actually not. Oh, there we go. That's there. There we go. So that's the shield. And you can kind of see we, we have these reactive environments in the game. Uh, there's quite a bit of destruction, and now we're using one of the supernatural abilities there. A uh, very deadly chair. Yeah. And we're going to use the shield again. And you can see how the environment kind of reacts to all of that. Like when Jesse pulls up the shield, the objects nearby will start to levitate as well. So there's a lot of sort of... Uh, so this environmental destruction, that, how does yeah. it affect the gameplay? Can you use it to your advantage? Or you can use it to, against your enemies offensively as well? Absolutely. Yeah, you can see that she can pick up things like the fire extinguishers and the clock and other elements and hurl them at the enemy. She can pick up debris and use it as a shield. Um, and she'll get up... <laughs> Oh, 
time has passed since I found you. Your master still lives. They'll soon make use of his bloodline. The limb you have lost will give way to something more useful. You'll learn to appreciate its worth. Well, it's optional. If you want to take on the extra <laughs> challenge, don't talk to Taljeet and just go out in the world unprepared. I'll probably cave and talk to the fortune teller. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about just kind of the gameplay that we're seeing on the screen here? Just kind Absolutely. of describe what's happening. Yeah. So here we see uh, this, is, this is the Royal Fortune being captained here. So that's, that's the biggest, strongest player ship we have here at E3. Ah. That has a, it's, it's a frigate with a huge amount of broadsides. Um, so that's really powerful. Um, here we can see the density of, of this, uh, this particular map. This is in the hostile takeover fortune, so the, the, the Portuguese and the English are, are fighting at sea here, so that uh, pirates are often opportunistic. So you can come in there and try and take advantage of these two factions fighting each other. You mentioned that that ship was the most powerful one you have here. Uh, what's going to happen if, if a brand new player sets sail and encounters someone who is at like end game status? Is, that, is there like a disconnect there? How do you handle that? That is something that we're actively looking at in our PvPVE world. How do we make sure it's, it has a, a safe onboarding and make sure that all, of, all different play styles will be uh, welcomed? And that's something we'll continue to look at. Good to know that you're working on it. Absolutely. Yeah.
So we've got a couple ships squaring off here. Yep, when you see the, the white sails, those are merchants. So as a pirate, those are, those oh, are like okay. the, the prey that you will be you're hunting to, to get the most loot. You can use your spyglass to identify what those merchants are carrying. And so if, you, if there's a certain type of commodity that you're seeking at that time, you can find that, that ship that you want and go oh, after I it. I see. I um, see. Here we see the, the crew there, um, yeah, manning what, the sails. What kind of ship is your favorite so far? We, so we have three ships here yeah. at, the, at E3. We have the, the Royal Fortune, which we spoke about, the big, the big frigate. Then there's the Black Horn, which specializes in ramming. That's, that's my personal favorite. I like to get <laughs> in close and nasty. There, you see it there in the front with a big front ram. That When you come close and you can really hit the ship hard and ideally transition straight into a boarding. Boarding is a, is a high-risk finishing move, which allows you to maximize your, your loot. Got it. And so I've got uh, one more question for you before we let you go. What do you think is going to make Skull and Bones stand out? made it. I know, and so does the authority. Hurry, get the untainted nanotrites and get out. Also for you, there is an extra boon. Something that will make you a veritable superhero. Elevator's still running. So far, so good. Looks like Ranger Walker's gonna get a bit of a boost today.
All my blessings go with you, my child. And so the day has finally come. My royal fledglings are leaving the nest. This disease kills thousands of innocents. Finding a cure is one of the reasons I came here. Did he tell you? This is a wild game of survival. We got a boy here who's gonna die without his meds. Those true sons assholes confiscated him, along with most of our drinking water. Up around Pink okay. Station. Okay, meet us at the sinkhole? Yep. Okay, sure. Definitely from the capital. You should have a new side mission on the map. Yeah, we're not that far. Okay, do it after the crash site? Sounds good. They're just ahead of us, Matt. Hey, I see you. I'll be up in a sec. Kit, we gotta get you leveled up. I know, please help, I've been busy. Toxic chemical residue detected. A lot of loot down there. Hey, you guys should really check this out. Almost there. So that's the control point. Hey, wait for me. Crap, they have a tank. Yep, I see him. Don't aggro him yet. Let me adjust my build. Got my crossbow and chem launcher. Chem cloud out. Matt, can you flank them and get a clear shot? I'll take that sniper on top. Wait for it. Got her. Matt, look out. All right, let me try to get that tank off you. More bad guys on the other side of the plane. Grenade, grenade. Duke, come on. Yep, yep, yep. R2 to... R2, okay. Oh, oh no! Shit. You can't melee the horde. <laughs> you can try. The strategy is panic oh. and run. <laughs> okay, we're on the move now. Lost my bike. Not good. You can still save it. I, I don't recommend a melee bat against these guys, but <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> Got to stay nimble here. This is going to be uh, 10 minutes of me running from these guys, isn't it? 
<laughs> well, Sid's trying to make his way around. How do you guys They're plan for to. all they'll, of these different topics that people are going to dive into? How do you think ahead of time of? I'm surprised about how things just kind of work. So, yeah. so we're supporting it by. It's just... always the best part of games like this is just seeing how people get so creative. Yeah, absolutely. We had a we had a company meeting last week where our head of QA literally took on the horde using his crossbow and custom crafted explosive oh, bolts. But it, it, I think this goes to your question is. Um, we, it makes perfect sense that it worked because the way we built the systems, right. but it's, it, emergence is about a bunch of fully oh. predictable, unpredictable <laughs> things, and it just works. Like, we're catching yourself catching on yourself fire. Catching yourself on fire is possibly a <laughs> good <Yeah>. strategy. <laughs> I think so. That's so he can set them on fire when they grab him. That's, yeah, yeah. that was the plan. Okay. This is so also one of the things we want to well. point out, though, is that the, the Horde locations are all story-driven, uh -huh. and so this is a mass grave site, so Nero would have come in as the world was ending dug these mass graves, and they happened to have giant barrels of fuel that they would have used to burn the corpses of all the people who had died during the pandemic. So there's a yeah. reason why you find all these explodables out in these areas. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> there you go. One of the key Dying Light 2 features a functioning ecosystem that reacts on multiple levels to the things you do and the choices you make. In the example we're about to show you, our protagonist undertakes a mission for the Peacekeepers, one of the many factions active in the city. They want you to negotiate with two survivors who are controlling and hoarding a water supply. Are you going to insult us with another final offer? Let's say you choose to carry out the Peacekeepers' orders, one way or another. Stay back. After this, you'll start seeing a significant change in the city as access to the water supply has allowed the peacekeepers to bring stability and develop the area. There's even running water for the people at street level. And that raises their morale and allows you to replenish your energy on the go. But there's a cost to this. The PKs have a rigid approach to law and order. So while the streets may be safer, it's only safe for those who side with them. So if you get on their bad side... Now let's return to that moment of choice. And instead of killing them, you choose to team up with this group to supply water in the black market. As you will see, this creates a very different set of consequences for the city. With water being a precious currency, it brings you access to new resources and trade but this in turn attracts the worst type of people to the area. And this is just a single decision, one out of hundreds you'll have to make. But it allows you to carve out your own world, your own city from the apocalypse. Briefed by the Spartan Order's commander, Miller, to explore the area, players will quickly find themselves thrust into a dangerous and hostile world. Even far away from Moscow, radiation levels are still a constant threat with players having to manage the time remaining on their gas mask filters in addition to their other resources. Scavenging for chemicals and materials that can be used to craft equipment and ammunition, therefore, is a must, and you'll be immersed within a world that constantly demands your attention in order to survive. The Volga level is many times larger than the most expansive level in Last Light, and is indicative of the new sandbox survival gameplay mechanic in Exodus. A critical narrative path is always there to follow, but these wild, open environments offer countless locations to explore and unique encounters for those who dare to venture off the beaten track. That electric tower there looks like a perfect sniping position. Let's go. Some of these locations may reward you with upgrades and new equipment, while others may provide greater insight into the lore of Metro. Within these huge environments, players will traverse the territories of the mutants, bandits, drifters, and survivors that inhabit post-apocalyptic Russia. Here, you'll see the AI biomes in effect, where humans, mutants, and animals will all react differently to their surroundings, depending on a variety of factors. Look, Players may see mutants hunting other mutants, and an open firefight could attract unwanted or maybe wanted attention. Early into their mission, 
Artyom and Anna stumble upon a group of cultists who believe electricity and technology caused the destruction of society in Russia. Having infiltrated the cultist's church and rescued two of their prisoners, players must find their way back to Miller and the Spartans and can choose a number of different methods with which to escape. As with any Metro title, Exodus places the onus on the player to choose how they progress. It's possible to play this entire level without killing a single human being, or if subtlety isn't your style, you can adopt a take-no-prisoners approach. Regardless of ethics and playstyle, however, there will always be a need to infiltrate areas with a level of discretion. Stealth, therefore, plays. These javelins are handcrafted and passed down from generation to generation, allowing those who have them to go out into the wild and feel super heroic. Today we will play from Jen's perspective in her Colossus, a heavily armored battle exo that trades agility for massive firepower. As you can see, her two friends have joined us. Renata is playing in the Ranger, a faster moving javelin with a focus on precision. Scylla is also playing a Colossus, but with a completely different loadout, one that focuses on close quarter combat, and we'll see his flamethrower a bit later on. He also has a totally different appearance with that sweet, sweet red speed stripe. Ours is an unfinished world, a world abandoned by its gods, the Shapers. It's also a reactive world. Here you can see our jets are overheating, but we can fly through this waterfall to cool them off. Owen, what's the plan here? Picking up loads of scars nearby. Take a look around the area, but uh, be careful. Owen is our cipher and guide for the mission and will provide valuable intel. The Scars are relentless invaders who crave the ancient power of the Shaper technology, and they're in a constant conflict with the Freelancers. Up ahead we have a Scar Watchtower. Our squad should probably
In 2077, they voted my city the worst place to live in America. Main issues, sky-high rate of violence, and more people living below the poverty line than anywhere else. Can't deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live here. This city's always got a promise for you. Might be a lie, an illusion, but it's there, just around the corner. And it keeps you going. It's a city of dreams. And I'm a big dreamer. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Um, please subscribe.